On this week's episode, I'm going to be showing off a new pair of socks. They are thick, they are chunky, and they were so quick to knit. So I'm really excited with how they turned out and I can't wait to show them off. I'm also going to be doing a tutorial on a mock cable stitch. This is a really good stitch to have in your library. It's stretchy, it can work as ribbing, and no cable needles are required. I'm also going to be answering a really fun question that I got about the difference between store-bought socks and hand-knit socks, and what are the pros and cons to both. Finally, I'm going to be giving you my number one tip for new sock knitters, and this is even great for people who are experienced sock knitters as well. So I'm really excited to kind of dive into that and tell you why I think this particular tip helps make all of us better sock knitters. So all of that and more coming up. Hello and welcome to the OK Knit Podcast. My name is Summer, I'm your host. I design sock knitting patterns in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and this is episode six. This week I've got a lot of good stuff to share with you. I've got some new socks that I knit. They're thick, they're chunky. I love thick, chunky socks, and I don't know why I don't knit more of them because they knit up really quick. So I'm gonna show you those in a second. I'm also gonna be doing a tutorial for the mock rib stitch. It's like a cute little stretchy. It's almost, you can use it as ribbing. It's a really cool stitch, doesn't require cable needles. So I'm gonna be doing a tutorial for that. We're gonna be talking about differences between hand knit socks and store-bought socks. And I'm gonna be sharing my tip, you know, for becoming a better sock knitter, whether you're a beginner or even if you've been knitting socks for some time. I'm not wearing any knits today. As you can see, it is like 70 degrees today in Tulsa. It's very windy though. And like Oklahoma gets really windy. The song is true. The wind really does come sweeping down the plains here. Um, side note, I don't like musicals. And like, <laughs> I don't get it because I am the target audience for musicals. Like I love whimsical things. I love costumes. I love dance. I love, you know, fun, wholesome stories. And I don't know. I don't know why I don't like musicals. I think it's, I think it's all the singing. <laughs> like I love the stories of a lot of musicals, but I feel like the story gets interrupted a lot so that people can like sing and dance around. And I don't know, I just can't get into them. Even Hamilton, like I started watching Hamilton and I was like, okay, this might change my mind about musicals. It was great the first 30 minutes, but then it was like, oh good, they're singing again. <laughs> oh, there they go again. They're singing another song. I don't know, it just gets boring. I can't do it. And there are people who love musicals. They just live and die by musicals. They know all the songs to all these famous productions. And I'm over here like, <laughs> I just, I can't do it. I don't know. So I've actually never seen the musical Oklahoma, like all the way through. I've just seen bits and pieces, you know, something about a Surrey with fringe on top and then a guy named Curly's doing, I don't know. I, I've literally never seen it all the way through. Sound of Music is probably the only one that I've almost watched all the way through. I've never made it completely. I've just, again, bits and pieces. And then Hamilton, um, I mostly watched. But again, after 30 minutes, I was kind of like half watching, half like playing on my phone, <laughs> not live. Like if I had paid for tickets, I would obviously like pay attention because theater tickets are really expensive, um, as is going to New York. I live in Oklahoma. So if I wanted to go see a musical, there would be a lot more involved than just buying the tickets and then hopping on the subway and going to the theater. Um, so if I were in person, I would absolutely like focus and pay attention, but that's probably never gonna, <laughs> that's probably never gonna happen. So I don't know if you like musicals, I love that for you because I wish that I did. Again, I feel like I'm the target audience for musicals. Um, but if you don't, please tell me in the comments so I know I'm not the only one because it feels like everyone in our community, like the crafting knitting community also loves musical theater. And I feel like, you know, it's just weird when we don't like the same things. <laughs> I know that we're all individual unique people, 
but we're bonded by this shared love of knitting. And so it's like, oh, you like musicals? Why don't I like musicals, you know? So um, anyways, episode six is not about musicals, believe it or not. <laughs> I was just trying to tell you that it's windy. And here we go. We got off on that tangent. So let's let's get into some socks. This week, yesterday, I released my Hibernal DK sock pattern. And so this is just a thick version of my Hibernal socks, which I will show on the screen here. That's the original version. I knit them in Knit Pick Stroll Tweed. It's a fingering weight version. They're really squishy. I knit mine a little bit oversized. The pattern kind of gives you instructions for both. Like if you want to knit them more form fitted or if you want to knit them kind of squishy and oversized like I did. Um, loves a hibernal stitch pattern on the original socks. It looks fantastic. But when I knit them in DK recently because I decided I wanted a thicker version of this pattern, I wanted to knit thicker socks. I rarely knit thick socks and I'm like changing that now because it's amazing. Um, anyways, I decided I wanted a thicker version. So I knit up a swatch and I just about died because the stitch pattern stood out so well, like even better than in the original. You can really see that gorgeous mock cable texture. It just, it looks so good. So um, I'm going to show you, I knit two samples because I wanted to do two different kinds of yarn. So this is the first, oh, I'm going to fold it. It's, a, it's long. I tend to knit, I love long socks. I like socks that I can pull up on my calf and then squish down if I want to. But look at that texture. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So that is a mock cable. Um, why does it keep going in and out of focus? Oh my gosh. But yeah, that's the mock cable and it's mixed with a rib pattern and it just creates, I just can't. <laughs> it looks so, so good. This particular yarn is Hedgehog Fibers Merino DK. It's a super wash yarn. I used one strand and this particular color is stone. It's brown, which is, is totally out of character for me. I do not often knit in browns, but for whatever reason, this color was just really striking on the internet. And then it came in and I, oh, let me grab it. I grabbed it. This is what I have left over. Um, it took, it took two skeins. Well, it took one and like a teeny little portion of another one. I was so hacked off because I almost knit an entire pair with one skein. So I, I had to use one full skein and then like four yards of the second skein. And that's only because I knit them so long. These are, the leg on these is seven and a half inches and you can see that was a very long sock again i like long socks so if you knit yours shorter you can probably get away with just one skein of dk but i am excited to have this i know i'll use this probably for like shorties or something or i don't know but this is stone and it's hard to even capture on camera it has just a luminescent quality to it <laughs> um yeah, it's just a really gorgeous, gorgeous neutral. I mean, I would consider it a neutral and mixing it with like pops of color um, on the toes or on the cuffs would look really good too. But yeah, again, I knit mine super long because I like to scrunch them. You could knit them shorter. Uh, the second pair I knit, I treated myself with this pair. There is nothing like mixing silk mohair with your wool on socks. It gives you total couch nest socks as i call it like if you have been at work all week friday night you come home and you are like i am going to make a nest in my couch full of blankets with my books my knitting my shows my snacks i'm ready to go like these these are the couch nest socks they're just so fuzzy and luxurious and i knit them pink um not because it's valentine's day i actually friggin' hate valentine's day <laughs> We'll go off on a tangent about that in a second, but yeah, aren't those gorgeous? And I'm trying to, I don't know if you can see the fuzz, but this is a single strand of Knit Pick Stroll Fingering Sock Yarn in the color Dogwood Heather, and it's mixed. I held it together with a single strand of um, Lux Mohair from Lang Yarns in color 109 Pink. So it's just a total, just love letter to the color pink. Very squishy, very soft, very fuzzy. Um, 
it is a treat for your feet. And again, I knit these long. I did, you know, seven and a half inches on the leg. So I like my socks long. If you want to knit them shorter, you can do that. And I'll do an overhead shot here in a second and I'll show you the yarn. I also started knitting a marled pair where I'm holding two strands of fingering weight yarn together and they're kind of speckled. I don't really know how that's going. Like I have my doubts about it. Um, I don't know. I'm going to keep going for a little while more and I'm going to show you what it looks like. Again, I've, I've talked about this in previous videos where when I'm doing any kind of textural pattern, I don't like a lot of heavy speckling or variegated yarns because I feel like it hides the pattern. And when you see, you know, these socks, you can really see that glorious stitch pattern coming through. Um, that's the foot. There we go. You can really see it really well. Um, and I feel like when you start getting into heavier speckling, variegated yarns, it's just harder to see the pattern. And I went to a lot of trouble to make that pattern. <laughs> so I, I don't know. This feels a little too heavily speckled for me. I'll show you what it looks like in a second. And you can kind of help me decide if I should keep going or not. But um, that is another way to achieve DK gauge. You know, you can knit with a single strand of DK. You can do fingering with a strand of silk mohair or you can do two strands of fingering together. They do create variations of DK in my opinion. You know, your single strand of DK, that's your most accurate DK. When you do fingering mixed with silk mohair, it's still DK, but I feel like it's just a smidge lighter. It's not quite as thick as actual DK. Not enough to me to really affect fit. Um, it feels a little, a little thinner, a little lighter, but not by much. On the opposite end, when you combine two strands of fingering weight yarn together, it's DK, but it's on the thicker side of DK. It's going to be just a little bit thicker, in my opinion, than a single strand of DK. Again, not really enough to affect fit, like where you need to adjust sizing. It's just a little bit noticeable. It's a little bit thicker. Um, so if DK were a spectrum, <laughs> pure DK in the middle, you would have fingering and mohair on the lighter side and then two strands of fingering held together on the heavier side. So kind of keep that in mind. But I do love that you have so many options when you are creating DK weight fabric. You don't just have to use a single strand of DK. You can get a little creative. You can use what's in your stash. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip the camera around and show you these socks in detail. And then I'm also gonna do the tutorial for the mock cable. So you can see how that's done. If you're a little bit nervous about doing that, if you've never done the mock cable before, I'm gonna show you how I do it. Okay, so these are the hibernal socks, hibernal DK socks. You can see the fuzz on the mohair and fingering weight version. Love the fuzz. Um, love working with silk mohair. And it also adds some strength to your socks, the silk and the mohair. Um, it just really adds a nice strength. So when I first heard of mohair, of course, when I was a newer knitter, I just assumed by the look of it that it was like this really fragile <laughs> yarn, but it's a lot stronger than it looks. So adding silk mohair to your socks does not make them more fragile um, at all. So don't worry about that. You can absolutely add this very luxurious fiber to your socks and enjoy them without feeling like, oh my gosh, if I wear these, they're just going to fall apart the first time <laughs> I wear them. That is not the case. Um, and of course, this pair is the single DK. And again, you can really see that beautiful, beautiful stitch pattern. By contrast, here are the original hibernal socks. These are knit out of fingering weight. And you can still see, I mean, the stitch pattern. It definitely still shows up there, but it really, really pops in DK. Um, I mean, that is just, I absolutely love that. So that's the original fingering weight yarn. 
And then these are the two DK versions. And you can just really see how that stitch pattern pops. I'm going to try to stretch this out. Again, I really like long socks, but you could absolutely, you know, knit this shorter, <laughs> I guess. Here, let's fold it under. That's an approximation of what it could look like. You know, obviously imagine a little cuff there. Here, we'll do that. There. So yeah, you can absolutely knit it shorter if you don't like super long socks. Um, for me, I love long socks. So this is seven and a half inches on the leg on both. And that's about 12 of these mock cables. Um, if you just want to count it that way, that's how I did it. Just so I could make sure that my socks were even. Um, I did 12 of these mock cables on the leg. And again, it knits up so fast. It's DK. You would be amazed how quickly these knit up. I really love knitting DK socks for that reason. Um, this is the stone that I used on that brown pair. And it's just, oh, it's the most beautiful, beautiful brown. I love it. Then the pink pair, we'll scooch those out of the way. I use, I barely have any of this left. This is Knit Pick Stroll, Dogwood Heather, one of my most favorite pinks. And then this is Lang Yarns. Lux mohair. It's a silk mohair blend. And you can kind of see the fuzz on that. It's super thin. And yeah, when you mix these two together, you do get DK. But again, I always say it's a little on the lighter side of DK, but not really enough to affect fit to where you need to worry about adjusting the size that you're knitting. Um, creates a really, really beautiful fabric. So yeah, the link to these pattern or to this pattern is um, in the description below the video. There is an introductory discount of 15% off through February 11th, 2024. You'll find the code in the description of the video. And if you're a newsletter subscriber, you get an extra special discount. Um, I've got a link to sign up for my newsletter in the description of the video. If you haven't done that, you get a special discount code for every new pattern. I release. That's a little bit more than just the standard introductory. So good reason to sign up for those newsletters. And I like to think they're also a little bit entertaining. <laughs> I don't send too many, so you're not going to be bombarded with them. But let's take a look at the marled version. Okay, so I haven't knit very much of it yet, as you can see. I've just started and I'm feeling confused. <laughs> So these are the two yarns that I'm using. They are both hedgehog fibers. This is from a hedgehog fibers club. So it's one of their potluck colors. And then this is called Bramble. Um, and I love them together. I love the fabric that this is making. It's really, really beautiful. I just don't know if I love the fabric on this particular pattern. You can see that you, it's, not as apparent, like the hibernal stitch pattern is just not popping because it's having to compete with all of these colors. Let's lower this a little. Ooh, do a little close up here. So yeah, it's having to compete um, with all of these beautiful colors. So if this were just a vanilla thick sock, I mean, this would be absolutely stunning fabric, but it's not. We've got a little texture pattern here and it's kind of hard to see. But I don't know. I am going to keep going. I'm going to knit at least the leg and then try it on because maybe when it's stretched out, it'll be more apparent and I'll see if I like it. Um, but I don't know. I have my doubts and sometimes, you know, you got to knit a while before you can really know for sure. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It does look beautiful though. I love the fabric it's creating. I am going to use this to show you how I make the mock cable stitch. So let's do that. Let me get comfortable here. Okay, so the mock cable stitch is worked over three stitches and it's worked over four rounds. You have four rounds of things that you have to do. Um, it's very easy to memorize. It memorizes very quickly. Let me pull some of this out here so I'm not yanking on it while I'm trying to knit. Um, all right, so let's get ready. So I'm gonna knit to my first mock cable. And again, the mock cable is knit over three stitches and it takes four rounds to do the whole cable no cable needle required all right i am at my first mock cable it's these three stitches here on my left needle and this is round one of the mock cable pattern so the first thing you're going to do is you are going to slip that first stitch purl wise with your yarn in back 
yarns in the back. And I just insert my right needle into that first stitch and slip it off purl wise. Then you are going to knit the next two stitches. And finally, we are going to pass the slipped, slipped stitch over. That's called PSSO in your pattern instructions. So we're just gonna take that first stitch that we slipped onto our needle, and we're simply going to pass it over the two stitches that we just knit. And that's it. So let me knit to the next mock cable, and I'll show you that one more time. We're knitting. It's always so awkward to knit on camera. I feel like I'm not knitting fast enough and then I'm, I bumble and make mistakes. <laughs> All right, so we're at our next mock cable. Again, three stitches here that we're going to be using. We are going to slip the first stitch purl wise with yarn and back onto our right needle. We are then going to knit the next two stitches. And then using our left needle, we are going to PSSO, pass slipped stitch over. We're just going to insert the left needle into that first stitch that we slipped and pass it over the two we just knit. And that's it. That is the first round of the mock cable. Very easy to do. You get in a groove and you get going pretty fast. So I'm going to come around and finish this round and then I'll show you round two of the mock cable stitch. All right, I finished the first round and now I am ready for round two of the mock cable stitch. Again, with this particular sock, I am knitting with two strands of fingering weight yarn held together. That creates a DK weight fabric um, when you do that. So that's why I am, I've got all these little strands here. So now I am at round two of the mock cable pattern and I have approached my first mock cable and you'll notice I only have two stitches instead of three because we passed that slip stitch over. So we lost that stitch and we need to get it back to keep our stitch counts where they should be. So round two, all you gotta do is simply knit the first stitch. We're gonna do a yarn over and then knit that second stitch. And now we have three stitches again. And that yarn over is what creates that lovely little eyelet in the center of the mock cable. So I'm gonna show you that one more time. We are going to knit over to our next mock cable. And I'll show you one more time. All right, once again, we've got two stitches here instead of three because on the first round, we passed the slip stitch over. So we are going to knit one. We're gonna make a yarn over to get that stitch back and then knit the second one. And now we've got three stitches and we're just gonna keep doing that. So I'm going to knit all the way around and then I'm gonna come back and show you what we're gonna do on rounds three and four because they're the same. Okay, I've now worked round two and I've started round three and I'm now at my mock cable. As you can see, I've got three stitches back on my needle, two knit stitches and a yarn over in between. So all we're gonna do on round three and four, you follow the same instructions for round three and four, we're just gonna knit those stitches. That's it. You do that on round three, you do it on round four, you've got your cute little eyelet. So you will knit those stitches round three, knit those stitches round four, and that's it. That is how you make the mock cable stitch. Very simple, no cable needle required. And it makes a really beautiful, beautiful stitch that you can use for ribbing. It's kind of stretchy, it's got that really pretty eyelet. Um, it can be a nice little detail like on the side of a garment. I could totally see this being like on the seams of a sweater. I think that would be really, really pretty. So that is how you knit it. And again, tell me in the comments what we think about this uh, marled, marled yarn for this stitch pattern. It's kind of hiding it, so I don't know, but we'll see. I'll knit a little bit more and then decide. I hope that tutorial was helpful and that if you were feeling a little bit nervous about doing the mock cable before, or you just wanted to see how I do it. I hope that that really helped you. And I hope that you enjoy knitting the hibernal DK socks as much as I did. Once again, I will have the links to that pattern in the description of this video. You can get it on Ravelry, my website, Etsy, wherever you like to buy patterns, it's available. So now let's get into a question from a viewer. She wrote to me and asked, 
what is the difference between store-bought socks and hand-knit socks? And I love this question because I did not freaking know. <laughs> never really thought about it and i was like this is this is a great opportunity for me to learn something because i just i've never really thought about what actually is in a store-bought sock um so i've got some of my favorites they are a little worse for wear so i really like these nike dry fit socks <laughs> it's just funny because this is a knitting podcast and i'm like holding up the most boring white athletic sock but i freaking love these socks they're really stretchy and thick and i like them I also like um, the J. Crew socks. Like these, these are a little pricey, but they come in really cute colors and they're really thick and they last a really long time. Like I have had excellent luck with these just, just not like falling apart or not getting holes. Like I, I really love the J. Crew socks. And finally, classic checkered van socks. Um, love these socks too. So all of these socks have one thing in common. They're made out of cotton, primarily. They're all very stretchy. They don't fall down. Um, great athletic socks. Wear them a lot. I really do wear store-bought socks a lot, and I'll explain why in a minute. Then you've got hand-knit socks. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. When, when you hold them all together, <laughs> like once you develop a um, sock knitting obsession and you knit a ton, like just a buttload of socks, you can just hold them up in bouquets, bouquets of knit socks and admire them. So clearly these have an advantage over the store-bought socks because they're like way cuter <laughs> by a long shot. They are really, really cute. You made them yourself, all of that. So let's kind of get into the difference. What makes a store-bought sock so stretchy, first of all? I've got my little notebook. <laughs> I took notes because this was a fascinating topic to me. So typically store-bought socks are made of cotton and then they also contain something that gives them that like really awesome stretchiness and elasticity. They just kind of snap and form right to your calf. They stay up. You're not having to pull them up. They don't typically lose their shape. And that is a lot of things. The elasticity could come from rubber and latex, spandex, elastane, lycra, in the case of my Nike socks, I researched this. I got online. The Nike dry fit socks contain primarily cotton, some polyester, and I imagine that has to do with moisture um, because cotton absorbs moisture, and then the spandex. So the spandex, the added spandex is what makes them so stretchy and so elastic and why they hold their shape so well. Socks that we knit, of course, you know, they're primarily knit out of wool and nylon blends. Nylon is there for added durability, but we don't have the spandex. We don't have, you know, oh gosh, there we go. We don't have the spandex, you know, to help make them extra stretchy and extra elastic. But we do have cute little designs and patterns, and we had the joy and fun of knitting them ourselves. So there's that. This particular pattern that I'm holding up is from my new book, The Sock Project, which comes out next week, which is crazy. I'll have a link to that in my uh, description of the video as well. But anyways, that's why store-bought socks are so much stretchier, why they hold their shape so well. It's because they typically have some kind of elastic added with that cotton, and it's oftentimes spandex or lycra. Um, so there's, there's the answer to that question. And I would say that store-bought socks have a slight advantage over our hand-knit socks in that area. Hand-knit socks can lose their shape. I get a lot of emails from people asking about that. You know, that after several wears, like the socks might be kind of baggy around the ankles. They don't stay up as well. They kind of lose their shape. If you're knitting socks out of cotton, this will be especially true. Cotton without elastic definitely loses its shape. If you have ever knit a cotton sweater, and then made the mistake of hanging it on a hanger, <laughs> it likely grew by several feet. Um, cotton, it just loses its shape so fast. So having that elastic in our cotton socks makes all the difference. Wool does not lose its shape like cotton does, but it is going to stretch out a little. And, you know, a lot of times I'll just reblock my socks and that kind of helps. Um, but I haven't really had too much of a problem with my socks losing their shape because I have so many. <laughs> so I don't, I don't wear them each pair is often because, you know, when you've got like, look at this, it's like a sock sandwich. Look at that. I just want to take a bite. 
out of that and it doesn't want to focus. Oh my gosh. There we go. Yeah. It's just like a sock sandwich. You just want to take a big old bite of that. Um, so yeah, when you knit like a literal butt ton of socks, you're not wearing, you know, the same three or four pairs over and over again. So that is one way, <laughs> a very fun way to remedy the problem of your socks not retaining shape the way that your store-bought socks do. Just knit a ton of freaking socks. <laughs> and that way you only wear them maybe two or three times a year because you have so many pairs and so they don't lose their shape as bad. Um, another thing about store-bought socks that would be at a disadvantage to the wool socks that we typically knit is that they're made out of cotton. Cotton retains moisture. It does not wick it away. And so, you know, our cotton socks smell a little bit and they become damp. So if you've ever just been out tromping around all day in cotton socks, you will know that by the end of the day, it's a little bit smelly and they are damp and it's kind of uncomfortable. Wool, on the other hand, has magical moisture wicking properties. It like prevents the moisture from retaining in the fabric. And so they don't make, they don't smell, like they don't retain odors and they don't get as damp. So that's an advantage that our hand knit socks have over store-bought socks. Um, another advantage, I'm, I'm referring to my notes in my little notebook. Um, another advantage that the hand knit socks we make have over cotton socks is provenance. We know where our socks came from, right? Um, a lot of the dyers in our community and a lot of the big companies too use ethically sourced wool when they're making the yarn. Um, we see the dyers on, on Instagram. We see them at work. We know who they are. We know what their faces look like. So we know that the labor that went into that um, yarn is fair and ethical. And then we ourselves are the ones doing the labor to make the socks. When you're buying store-bought socks, unfortunately, that's not always the case. Sometimes it's very hard to trace down where your sock even came from. Where did the cotton come from? Was it ethically grown? Who was picking the cotton? Who was farming it? Who was milling it? Who was producing it? What factory was producing the sock itself? Was, you know, what country did it come from? Did the workers work in good conditions or poor conditions? Nike doesn't have the best history with that. Um, this sock was dry fit and the dry fit factories, I researched this too, for Nike are typically in Vietnam. Vietnam has had a history of child labor practices. 80% um, of the people who work in the garment factories in Vietnam are women. And there hasn't always been safe working conditions, especially at Nike plants. Now that's supposedly gotten better, but again, with large corporations, it's not easy to track down. Nike also claims that they don't have a lot of oversight over some of these factories. They're contracting with them. So with store-bought socks, it's hard to tell where your sock came from, where the cotton came from, who made it, who stitched this sock, what kind of working conditions did they have? Whereas with our beautiful piles of squishy hand-knit socks, that's not the case. We can, I'm going to move this. It wants to focus on these socks over here, which I get because they're really pretty, but <laughs> my camera keeps focusing on them. But yeah, with our beautiful piles of hand knit socks, it is much easier to tell where the materials are coming from and to make sure that the labor practices involved were fair. So that's, that's another big advantage. Um, I do have both. Again, I wear both hand knit socks and I wear store-bought socks. For me, when I'm running or walking around my neighborhood, I prefer the store-bought socks. They slide on really easy, throw them in the washer and when I'm done, it's just really easy. Um, and I like the elastic holding them up. I also don't like doing a lot of friction on my hand knit socks. I'm not a mender. I don't like to mend. <laughs> so I typically wear these around the house or if I'm going on an outing, like if I'm going out to lunch or something and I wear them with my cute little Burks, I just don't want a ton of friction. Um, and of course I wear them like with outfits when I want to look cute. <laughs> I don't always want to look cute though. A lot of times I just, I don't care. <laughs> so when I'm not worried about looking cute, I just wear the store-bought socks. So those are the big differences between store-bought socks and hand-knit socks and why your hand-knit socks don't typically have the same like get up and go, why they don't have that same elasticity is because they literally don't have elastic. They don't have spandex added to them. And so they're going to lose their shape a little more the remedy to that is just to knit more socks. So you're not wearing the same pairs over and over again. So anyways, that was kind of interesting. I loved that question because it forced me to kind of research and, and learn new things. And I loved that. 
So let's move on to the final section of today's podcast, and that is me talking about my number one tip to becoming a better sock knitter, whether you are just starting out or whether you've been knitting socks for some time, but you just want to improve your skills because you feel like, ugh, you know, my socks aren't looking so great, or maybe you're just in a rut and you just want to shake things up and try something new. Um, this is a very simple tip, and it kind of falls in line with what I was just saying when we were discussing the difference between store-bought socks and hand-knit socks, and that is to just knit a bunch of socks and specifically knit vanilla socks. I would suggest doing one or two pair a month of just basic socks, especially if you're a new sock knitter. There are several reasons for this. The first reason is that it allows you to familiarize yourself with the construction of the sock. And more importantly, you're committing the construction of the sock to muscle memory in your fingers. And it'll get to where you don't even have to really think about what you're doing. You will have knit, you know, after several pair, your fingers kind of know what to do. Your brain automatically knows what to do. And when your mind is freed from thinking about what you're supposed to be doing next, you can really get creative. So that's, that's the first reason why knitting a bunch of basic socks is really good for you as a sock knitter, whether you are a beginner sock or more experienced and you're just kind of in a rut. Knit a bunch of basic socks. Commit that construction technique to muscle memory so that you know what you're doing. You don't have to think about it. It's just second nature. The second reason why knitting a bunch of basic socks is good for you, and this is especially true for newer sock knitters, it helps you to resolve your tension. If you are used to knitting sweaters or hats or shawls on like a bigger yarn and you start knitting with teeny tiny fingering weight yarn on teeny tiny needles, your tension is going to be all over the place and it's likely going to be a little bit looser. Loose tension on socks can be a bad thing because the looser the tension, the bigger the fabric, the bigger those holes are that you're making and stocking that stitches, you know, that's a V stitch then your sock's gonna wear out faster. A tighter gauge, tighter stitches create a more durable fabric. And the more basic socks you knit, the more your gauge is going to tighten up. You're gonna become a tighter knitter. And you kind of want that with socks because again, tighter gauge makes for a more durable fabric. And it just looks really neat too. When you first start knitting socks, your tension's kind of all over the place, your sock's a little wonky. The more you knit, the more that fabric is going to start looking neater and neater and neater. So that's my second reason why knitting a bunch of basic socks makes you a better knitter. So even if you've been knitting socks for a while and you kind of notice like, mm, my tension could be better, maybe I need to just go back to basics. Instead of knitting socks with a lot of different patterns, just go back to basics and see if I can get my tension a little tighter so that my stitches are not as loose and my fabric is more durable. The third reason to knit a bunch of basic socks is that you really get to know who you are. You get to know yourself, what colors you like. You can experiment with colors. You can push yourself outside of your comfort zone, try color combinations that maybe scare you a little bit. Um, you know, I talked about this in a Zoom event that I did recently that the fashion industry is so good at telling us what to do. They tell us what's right, what's wrong. They tell us this looks good. I mean, the famous scene in Devil Wears Prada when, you know, Meryl Streep is like lecturing Anne Hathaway about how you thought this was just blue, but it's actually cerulean and, you know, whatever. Like, that's what the fashion industry does. They are, that's their job. They tell us what looks good, what's in style, what we should like, what we shouldn't like. And along the way, I feel like a lot of us have lost, like, what we actually feel about things. We don't trust our own opinions. We worry that what we like is wrong. We worry that we don't have good taste. And so we're constantly listening. It's all around us. When we open social media, when we watch TV, when we you know open magazines, anything, it is everywhere. We are being inundated with other people's opinions about what looks good. And that drowns out our own voice our own internal measure of what looks good and what feels right for us. I really truly feel, this is, sounds so cheesy, but I really truly feel that knitting a bunch of basic socks, experimenting with color, going to what you gravitate for, don't question it, don't question your judgment, don't question your taste, don't question if it's right or wrong, go for it. The color combinations that excite you and that spark joy, the yarn that sparks joy, go for it. You're, you're doing this whole journey where you're knitting a bunch of basic socks, 
because you want to improve your skills, use that as an opportunity to like fine tune your own internal voice about color and what looks good and what feels good to you. Don't listen to anything else. Just gravitate towards what you like and use it. And I really feel like that's just such a great opportunity to get to know yourself and what colors you like and don't like. That all translates into other projects. Sweaters, hats, scarves, things that you're wearing front and center on your body. The more that you learn about what colors look good on you to you and what colors feel good to you through socks, which are a relatively low stakes project. They're small, you can hide them with your pants. So the more you learn on socks, the more that you can apply that to other things. You can also apply it to your house, home decorating, so many things. So I feel like it gives you the confidence when you're knitting a bunch of basic socks to really experiment with color, find out what you like, drown out all the chatter from the fashion industry, from other people trying to tell us what's right, what's wrong. Just listen to yourself. So that's my third and perhaps most profound <laughs> reason why you should knit a bunch of basic socks. And I have them over here and I do this every flipping episode. I have like a pile of socks that I want to show you and then I put them just out of arm's reach. So pardon me while I, I go grab these. Okay, so these are a bunch of basic socks that I knit for my book actually. I've got a whole chapter on basic socks where I give you like five or six different cuffs to try. I give you five different heels, a toe up recipe, a cuff down recipe, so you can really experiment and find the basic sock that you like best and that fits you best. And so, oh my gosh, I knit these in just a whole variety of colors because I wanted to show how fun it is to just, you know, experiment with color, you know, mustard and yellow on blue and then red with this cute little brown toe. Um, I'm trying to make sure we're focusing here. And then this really vivid jade green with forest green toes. And then we've got neons and neutrals. Really beautiful. Love neons with neutrals. Um, pink and orange. We've got teal with hot pink and a little surprise, you know, light pink in there. So yeah, just, I mean, how happy is this? Just this beautiful pile of basic socks. And so I recommend doing this because, again, it improves your skills as a sock knitter. It's the number one thing that's going to make you a better sock knitter, right? Putting in the practice, practicing your craft, putting in that time. Malcolm Gladwell is famous for saying, you know, people who are really good at something, they're good at it because they've put in 10,000 hours, right? And for those of us who have been knitting for years and years and years, we've got a lot of hours in. But for sock knitting especially, you know, I've been knitting socks for like five years now put in a lot of hours, a lot of practice. And a lot of that was on basic socks and they're happy. They're joyful. You get use out of them. You can wear them. You experiment with color. You can work on tightening up your gauge, work on improving your skills. So that's my number one tip. Whether you are a brand new sock knitter or whether you are an experienced sock knitter, but maybe you just want to improve your skills more knit a bunch of basic socks. Let this be your year of basic socks where you experiment with color, and yeah, really up those skills. So anyways, it has been a really fun podcast this week. I've really enjoyed everything that we've talked about. Um, one thing to note, I feel like Bill Maher, at the end of all of Bill Maher's, you know, shows um, on HBO, real time, he always said, you know, this week I'll be at the Palladium in Las Vegas. That's me this week. I'm, I'm going to be places. I'm going to be traveling for my book tour. So I'm going to be at Full Circle Books in Oklahoma City, Tuesday, February 13th for their knit night. I'll be signing books. The following Saturday, I will be back in Tulsa at Magic City Books to do a signing and talk and event. And then in the coming weeks, I'll be in Texas. I'll be in Arkansas. I will list those dates below so that if you are nearby, you can come see me. We can meet. We can talk socks. Um, I'll have the links to the Hibernal DK socks, that pattern. Um, I'll have that in the description of the video. My Knit Stars course. Um, if you are familiar with Knit Stars Masterclass events, they're like these workshops, basically, that are filmed professionally like a movie and you buy them and you can watch them in your own home instead of having to like travel to a knitting festival. And so Knit Stars recently put my sock knitting masterclass for sale individually. You can buy it without buying the whole rest of season seven. Um, so I'll have a link to that in the description of the video as well. If you want my sock knitting masterclass where I walk you through 
all things sock knitting. Um, I'll have that in the description below the video. It's on sale right now. And yeah, I think that's it. Everything else you can find in the description below the video as well for newsletter signups, links to my pattern stores, my Instagram, my email, all that good stuff. Keep sending in questions. You guys are sending in fantastic questions. I really enjoy researching and answering them. So I hope you have a great weekend and I will see you here next week.